Hey guys, um, it's an update on updates. So I'm in a rotten mood, had a rotten night. Rotten night. I won't swear, I'm fucking tired of that. I mean, oops. Alright, so here's what happened yesterday. Since the last video, so they moved me out of Crescent Dome, Lucifer Town to St. Lucian, St. Lucian, and the first dream I had, pretty short, I'm in, I'm in an elevator with some little guy, some little, somebody, I don't know who he was, and big giant mean nasty guy is beside me he starts uh, picking on us and he realizes he gets away with it because I didn't react and then uh, he wants something but I won't give it to him I don't know I forgot what it was he wanted but I won't give it to him and then he uh, threatens he threatens me and I say, and this guy's pretty intimidating. Like, in the normal world, I'd be shitting myself. <laughs> and he's treating me like, objectively. You know how they do that? You know, they're like, uh, so what you got in your wallet? What are you going to do for me? That type of thing. I don't know why, why anybody would do that. Because you know it's coming. They do it. They've done it to me before, all my life. These fucking people. Anyway, you know that type of person. Give me something. What have you got? I want it. That type of thing. Anyway, he does that to me, and I go. And he goes. He says basically, "Give me something. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you a bad day. Something like that." And I go, "Is that a threat?" And he goes, "Yeah." Uh, and then, as soon as he said that, I pulled out my knife and stuck it in his neck. Yeah, pulled out my knife, stuck it in his neck. I had the, my, the knife in his neck in my hand. Then I tripped him, brought him down, and put my elbow on his neck and just fucking stabbed him like that. <laughs> Repeatedly in the neck. <laughs> vital areas anyway then I woke up Christ was freaking out not freaking out but he came to help got the guy I did a good job yay it's different in the spirit world man especially in Christianity this was in the same illusion and that dream was a simulation dream it wasn't a real dream it wasn't I wasn't act, interacting with other. I wasn't interacting with other people, spirits, entities. It was all like simulation. So, <clears throat> after that dream, I went back to sleep. I'm in Saint Lucian. I'm third person in this dream, and I'm watching this guy in a room, and he's fucking nuts, and I'm watching him. And he goes to the toilet, and he's praying into the toilet, like this. Right into the toilet bowl, like he's puking. Right? He wasn't puking, but you know when you get drunk and you go to the toilet, and they say, are you praying again? <laughs> that type of thing. <laughs> well, this guy was doing that, but he wasn't drunk. He was just nuts. He was right out of his mind. And uh, anyway, I was watching this, and I didn't know what to do. I'm like third person, like hovering ceiling. I'm hovering at the ceiling looking down at this person going fucking nuts. And uh, I woke up from that. Chris goes, why did you do anything? I go, I was third person. I didn't know. I, I was just watching. And he goes, we should have called Chris and reported it. And I go, he didn't do nothing to anybody. Like, he was just doing it himself. And he goes, that's abuse. You don't do it. That's abuse to Christianity. Huh? I'm like, well, I don't know. And he goes, that's why you're having these dreams. That might great, whatever. So, on to the next one. That was another dream. I should have reported it, but I didn't.
Because I didn't think I had to. But he wanted me to. Okay, this third dream was a heavy one. I'm in St. Lucian, and I'm in the spirit world. Which is the illusion. One of the illusions. I fucking don't know. I'm just going to call it spirit world, astral plane, or uh, a fake hologram thing. So, I'm walking in a park. I'm having a good time. I'm in a park walking around having a good time. And uh, I come across this little place in the park where they have like a water fountain. And there's shrubs around it. Shrubs around it and a little walkway around the water fountain. There's water coming out. And I look in there. I see some stuff in the shrubs. So I go into the shrubs. I look at the shrubs and it's my stuff. My stuff. And what it was was model, my model trains. Now, I used to make model trains. I still want to do it, but I, that requires a, a air air gun. And that uh, makes a lot of noise. The compressor makes a lot of noise, so I can't really do it here. But unless I can find a compressor that's silent, and they're 300 bucks. I ain't rolling around cash here. So anyway, I find these model trains, they're my model trains, and they're worth 600 bucks a piece, okay? This was back when I was had some cash flowing. And what I do is I weather them, make them look like real for people that like, that play with trains, rich people that have a lot of money, play with trains, I sell it on eBay and they buy it, right? So I can get a lot of cash that way, and I love doing it. I just don't like selling my trains because I like trains and I want to keep them, but I can't, so I got to sell them. But anyway, they're all stuck in my closet. I just ain't got around to sell them yet. <coughs> they were like locomotives and stuff. Anyway, <coughs> I see my trains and they're all wet and there's mud on them. And they're in the original boxes and they're all fucking, and I'm, I'm upset. But I don't really get mad at this point. And I'm like, who's doing it? I put my trains and I put them in a bag and I want to take them home to see if I can fix them up or anything. So I'm walking around with that bag and then I forget about it. And I'm walking around this park and it's a lot. Now I'm on the side of the ocean in this park. And um, I'm walking along the side of the ocean and I come to, there's like a, a, little, a little drop then there's a rocky beach like rocks and then the ocean's hitting the rocks and I'm in there and uh, I look at the other rocks <sighs> and then the rocks are about 20 of my trains right that I've done and I'm looking at them I, I get start crying I'm crying because my trains are wrecked and uh, I pick them all up and they're all useless they're all covered in water we're all wrecked and they're like sacred to me man because I spent you know like 10 hours on one train and I was like there's like 11 of them here and I said, you spend 10 hours on one train or more de detailing weathering it it's your sacred shit, man. Anyway, I get fucking mad. I come up, I turn around, I'm walking, I'm really mad. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking, how, who, who, who did this? And I went to my little buddy that I'm with, whoever that is. He's always there. I went to the little guy. I said, look, you go to them guys and find out and say, Rich found his trains, man, in the ocean. And just spread the word and see who reacts. See what you get back. Try to, and that, just say say that to the, the, the guys and see what comes back to you. And he goes, okay. And so, because I want to find out the person who didn't fucking kill him, right? Not, we're literally, but in the dream. That's how mad I am. Anyway, I, uh, I did that and I'm walking and all of a sudden I got this like betrayal feel, feeling. And I got real mad, and I was walking by a picnic table, and I fucking, or a little, some kind of table, 
But anyway, I smashed it. I just went, bam, I smashed it. And then Christ freaked out. He freaked out. Christ comes running down. And uh, I started waking up. And I was so, I was so pissed. And, uh, and I knew it was the gang, the rotten kid gang from my past. Well, I used to hang out with these guys from my past when I was a kid, like 18 years old. I used to hang out with a bunch of my friends. Well, anyway, anyway, in the spirit world, there's another gang of friends that are a part of my physical gang of friends. And these spirit world gang are rotten. They're not cool. They're douchebags. Anyway, they're out to fucking get me. One of them shanked me. Um, Christ caught one. They keep sending me misfit notes in my mailbox, taunting me. And this time, they wrecked my trains. And I wanted to catch them really bad and fucking kill them. And they said, no, you can't. I go, why the hell not? You're training for this. And when they said the law is to give it to Christ, let Christ take care of it. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's all fine, but here I am, right? I don't know. I just woke up, guys, trying to get through this. Anyway, I'm pissed off. I said, look, I wasn't going to fucking kill him. You can't fucking kill him anyway. Does anybody die in the spirit world? Maybe there's some super smart spirit extraterrestrials out there that can disintegrate your soul. I don't know. But they pissed me off. Anyway, that pissed me off. Um, Christ said, "Give it if you see them and catch them. Call Christ." I'm like, "All right." And I go, "Why am I out here beating up the shit out of everybody, learning to, learning to fucking learning to fight these people in from Christendom?" And he goes, well, you're doing defense on other people and defense on yourself. You're not doing it. This is different. You're hunting. You go, he goes, you're, you're out to get someone now. And he goes, you don't do it that way. You defend yourself. You don't go out hunting. And if you do, you get Christ to take care of it because you can't. And I'm like, all right, get it. I got it. So it's different, right? So then... Today or last night, I'm going to bed. 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, sorry. Guess who's in me? Queenie. It seems she has, Christ has got some questions about my, about my head. The Christendom Christ, I'm guessing. And I think she's there to give me sex trains. So I'm ripping her a new one. I'm calling her every name in the book. Christ is getting mad. Every time I taunt her, I call her name. She's in my head. She's rewiring in my head. I go, what are you doing in my head? And I can see it. I'm right inside my head. She's there, and she's doing something, building some kind of little thing. And it's a little squeeze machine. And she goes, she goes, you can't get to the truth unless you have a, unless your brain, unless you have a, a hemorrhage. She goes. The only way to get to the truth is to give you a hemorrhage. And I go, in my brain? And I'm like, she goes, yeah. And then she squeezes my brain with this lever thing. And it's a little part of my brain. It's a little part of my brain. And she squeezes it with this thing she built. And uh, when you squeeze this part of your brain, it's not actually your fucking brain, okay? Just, it's all in the spirit world inside yourself. She squeezes the skin that surrounds that part of the brain. She triggers it. This part of your brain releases information of your secrets. Okay? And then when you squeeze it, when she squeezes it with energy or whatever, she squeezes this part of your brain, the secrets pop up, and she takes them and reads them. Sees what you've done in your past, what you're holding secret. So that's fun. So I ended up, I was pissed off, and I figured, okay, she's doing work, so she's going to want to get paid. And when she does work on you, and she helps you out, I don't know, this is kind of a violation of me. 
I'm bitching at her about this, but I'm bitching at her about the sex that's coming because whenever she does things for Christ, she does things for Christ. Like she comes into you, finds out information, and she's like a specialist. There's nothing you can't do. There's nothing you can do. You can nothing. She's in you. She's gonna get what she gotta get down to your fucking DNA. She knows everything. She has been alive for ten million years. She tells me, ten million years. She ain't human. She looks like a maggot. A, oh, she's about this big or smaller, but the size of your hand. And she squirrels around inside you, looking at your stuff. She can go right into your cells, right into your DNA, tear it apart and splice it. All right, but she don't. But she can. This is what she does. She's been around for ten fucking years. A million years, she knows every goddamn thing about the human body and more that you don't even know, and other extraterrestrial races. They call her Queenie. Why? Because she wants to have sex. She wants all your fucking sexual experiences and real time sex. She wants to have sex with you. That's why they call her Queenie. And she's just a fucking mega. But she can't be born. So she wants experiences. I don't want to give her no fucking experiences. Because I'm sick of that shit. Period. Queenie or no Queenie, I'm sick of it. So she squeezes my head. There's nothing there. They've already done it ten times. They've already looked at my secrets ten times and came up with nothing. There's nothing in there. No more secrets to reveal. But she's going to do it anyway because Christ requested it. So I got to go through this bullshit every night. And now she wants to get paid. How does she get paid? She gives me sex dreams. And everybody fucking watches and has a good time. Like I'm, I'm, and I'm like, fuck. So I'm pissed off about that. Okay. I'm going to try to not get, I'm going to try to. It, when, when I'm telling you this stuff, it's 100% real. It's 100% personal. And my fucking emotions go nuts. Because I'm reliving it. Anyway. She's going off about that. I know what's coming next. Tonight, or this afternoon, if I have a snooze in the afternoon, I get sex dream. The reason, because she wants payment. That's her little game. I'll come in and heal your tumor, but I want fucking sex for it. Most people don't care. Sex is good, I'm happy. To me, it's a fucking violation and a rape, period. Can't stand it. So I ended up calling her Job of the Hut. <laughs> she, she goes, What's the Job of the Hut? <laughs> I go, Google it. The Chris goes, What's the Job of the Hut? And I went, Google it. So they did, and they found out. They were pissed off. So I'm calling her Queen, I call her the Hut. <laughs> she looks like Job of the Hut. Basically, she's like a big maggot. She's a little tiny maggot. But Jabba Hutt looks like a big maggot. Anyway, same same thing they do. It's like the same thing, man. Even my innocence agreed. Well, he's not too far off, you know. <laughs> Fucking puff. Anyway, that pissed me off. So, they squeezed my brain, came up with nothing. I woke up. They didn't find anything. I go, well, so what did you get? Nothing. I go, well, now I get to have sex dreams all night. Thanks a lot, Jesus. Thanks a lot. I could have told you. My innocence told you. There was nothing in there for you. There's no fucking secrets. No dirty little goddamn secrets. But you got you had to do what you gotta do. Now I gotta now I gotta have fucking now I gotta whore myself out to the fucking to the hut. So you can so she can get her fucking payment. But yeah, we don't give a fuck about that. You know, don't worry about that. Oh, it drives me nuts. Yeah, that's the way things work, right? There's nothing you can do. Not fucking thing. I can't find nothing. All the crates are in agreement. You're wrong. We have the right to do this. You, you have no fucking nothing. You have no fucking say, meat bag. You have no say, meat bag. In the spirit world, they don't care. They don't see sex. They see sex as eating food. Like when you sit down and eat a fucking, when you're eating a sandwich, that's how they see sex. I don't. But in the spirit world, they do. They don't. They don't give a fuck. It means nothing to them. But they all fucking want it. That's what I don't understand. Especially Queenie. So when she's around. It's just about sex.
she can come in and show you shit in your fucking head and tell you your whole past lives, every goddamn thing, everything. I don't even know if she could probably cure cancer. But she's a specialist in this shit. And, but goddamn, she can do it. And I go, why don't you use your heart and compassion and just fucking do it without no goddamn sex. Without payment of sex experiences. She goes, I had my reasons. Yeah, I know. I heard your reasons. I ain't never seen the sisters again. Never. They came around one time and healed me up. Never seen them again. Sisters of Eve. Never seen them again. But Queenie's here all the time. So, I don't know why. They didn't kick me out of Christendom. I spent one night there. I'm back in St. Illusion. And I'm having all my experiences there. So they say, I asked about that, and they said, well, you got to finish up your odds and ends, stuff that you're dealing with there before. But he goes, you're going to be back and forth from St. Illusion to Christendom. And they're still fighting with me now. They're pissed off because I called her. I totally degraded her into fucking... Every, everything. And you know what? Don't mean nothing. I'm just hurt myself. Abuse. They call it abuse. And when I make fun of her and call her the hut, call her a maggot, and call her all these names, and the only, re only reason I can do it, the only reason I do it, is this is the only thing I can do to her. I can sit here and let my innocence say, you know, it's not nice. If you do that to Rich, he don't like it. There's no impact. Chris goes, I know. That's too bad for you, but we're doing it. Okay. I'm losing my shit. Okay, that's what they, that's the way they talk. The only way I can get some fucking respect around here is if I got fucking abuse everybody. I literally get rid of, cut their, beat them up. <sighs> Over the top fucking irrationality. Over the top, just fucking anger and rage. And screaming and yelling. And I want everybody's fucking attention. That's the only way it stops. And it don't stop. They just wait a day. And nail you when you're not thinking of it. And then you go through this whole process again. And this is going to happen. Today or tomorrow. I'm going to have my sex dream. Totally fucking violated. Feel like shit. Everybody's laughing. I don't even know if they do it on purpose. man. I think that, Well, I know they do the sex on purpose, but... They'll sit there watching ooh and ah and laugh and fucking. Bob drives me nuts. Fucking makes my blood boil. But I'm just a meat bag. I got no fucking say. That drives me nuts. And to them, it's no thing. You know, they just like watching. Because they don't get to see it all the time. But since I'm a meat bag and my innocence lets them all fucking in and watch. I get to fucking go through all this bullshit. Welcome to Christianity. Boy, I wonder what they do to you if you're a Muslim. This is Christianity. Nice and compassionate and love. You want to see your 27 versions or whatever in Muslim land? Holy fuck. I don't even want to know that. Or other religions, or any of them, fuck. You know, Christianity is, is just, I don't understand, it's not a religion, it's just a way of being with creation. In order for you to be a Christian, you gotta go through all this shit. When you die, you gotta go through what all I gotta go through. Probably just once or twice. But I'm here in the body experiencing it. So they fucking want to do everything to me. Every goddamn thing. Because it's unique. I mean, I'm a unique. You think I'm ever getting out of here healing my head and fucking off? Back to the fucking normal world for my myself? I don't know. They sure love fucking with me. Every goddamn thing. I think they're doing even experiments on me. Trying new shit they've, they've never done. I get mad for a day, then it goes away, and I get back with the program because I really have no choice. 
And it's all good. I get to beat up bad guys, go hunt fucking demons and shit, and learn new cool things. And all of a sudden, every fucking month, every month, it's time for your sex to be rich. Unbelievable. Anyway, that's about a half an hour video. I'm going to check it for any cool orbs. I saw a good one earlier. I eyeballed it. I was in the other room and it came down right here over the top of the chair. It was huge. Anyway. Don't talk to the dead because this is what happens to you. Later.